Hello again, it's me, Milton, with the Milton channel. Of course, you can tell by the title of this video what it's all about. Right, why? Okay then, Bosch. Bosch decided, in their infinite wisdom, years ago, not to put screws inside the chuck so we could remove the chuck. They put a pin in. Now DeWalt has joined the bandwagon, they're doing it. I've done the three drills in question, which is the DCD-77, the DCD-76, 796, sorry, and the DCD-996. I've done them videos, and believe you me, the DCD-996, sorry, yeah, tongue tied all these bloody numbers, were just a royal pain in the backside. This model here, of course, is the professional, Bosch Professional, GSB 18 v stroke EC, right? Okay, so first of all, get rid of the blinking battery out of it, we don't need it, right? And all this is just in case you damage the chuck. If you damage the chuck, you've got to change the clutch, gearbox, and selector. Now, I will admit, if you damage the clutch or if you damage the gearbox, yes, I can see why you have to change all of this. But now you have to also change the chuck as well. All right, so you get a new chuck. Okay, how much is the whole assembly? We never actually looked at the Bosch. But there was a guy on YouTube a while back, and he decided, right, his chuck had went, and he wanted to get a new chuck. Now, at the time, Bosch chucks were about £15 online. But he had to buy the whole assembly. And, of course, the whole assembly came and it cost him, I think, $35. Which might not sound too bad, but that's about two years ago. So how much is it now? About $45? And if you don't do the job yourself, then guess what? You're going to hand it into the shop to do it. And they're going to charge you about £15, £20, maybe even £25, just to change that over. Now, I don't know how much a bear unit is, but at the moment, all these things, you will see we run at about £70. So probably for Bosch, you might be able to pick one up for £70. Therefore, you're better off buying a new drill. All this, because you can't change the chuck. But if it's a gearbox, or the clutch, or the speed selector, fine, fair enough, I can see the point of view of splitting the whole thing apart. So how do we split the whole thing apart? Right, first of all, tools we need as a PH2, that's to remove the belt, which we'll do now, right? You also need a long Torax T10, because one of the screws is buried away inside, and I'll show you which one it is, wow, right? So we'll remove that, that's done, okay? Is inside, here it is, there, right? Now, I bought some of these from Way online. This one here cost me £17, expensive, that's nothing. An even longer one cost me £22. I said it was 21 yesterday and then changed it, never mind. Or you can use to Torax bits, which Torax is known as Star or Torsion, whatever you want to call them. They're umpteen different names, right? A set like this, which has got a T10 in it. Or use the type that you get the Torax bits on here, which should have had a handle on it like so, but unfortunately my handle broke ages ago. You get them in T10, right? Or you could go to somewhere like Aldi that sell the T-handled torsion bits, right? Torax bits or T-bits, right? For about £5. And if you're in America, I suppose you could go to, say, Walmart or uh, Harbour Fraught Freight. I was going to call it Fraught. I'm going to listen to somebody else. Right, or... You could go on, on Amazon and buy this set. This actually comes with a long one actually in it. Now I'll give you what it's called on the Amazonian channel. Right. Now I spelt Milwaukee wrong. I spelt it, right, with an N. And I got Milwaukee. So it starts off Milwaukee number 4932430. Nine zero six shockwave impact driver bit set 48 pieces in brackets red price 22 pound 95 yeah and i bought one of these for 22 pound am i a mug or what but then again it is professional but that's not what i'm using 
I'm using a set from this company, which I got a T10, a T15 and a T20, which I was very happy with, which I think was only, I think, only think about seven pound, right? And they're pretty good quality. And this is a tool I'm using to get it off. There's another way, but you're not gonna do it with this one because it's better the way down. If you're using these 25 mil bits, do something like that, it ain't gonna reach. Okay, end of story. So, how do we get this to do it? You're not gonna do it with this one because unfortunately it's too deep inside. You're gonna have to get a long one. Even filing it down lower around on here and places like this, right? Taking away material from around here. It ain't gonna do it. You're gonna struggle. And then of course, you'd have to get like pliers or something like that and hold it and push it down in the inside and turn it like that. You ain't gonna do it. End of story. You're gonna have to get a long bit for this one because Bosch have made it's fair. I mean, I agree with it. I can't say any more than that. It's the way they've made them. So, okay then. So, how do we get it apart? What do we need? And we also could do it rubber hammer. Sometimes we need it, sometimes we don't. You'll find out why, right? So, we've got the bits we need. So, how do we do it? Right, we've got rid of the belt hook, we've got rid of the battery. This PC has to come off the back. Just do it that way and it comes off, right? Okay, some of you have probably lost that bit by now anyway, because they do, if it take a bad fall, they fall off anyway. Okay then, stick the drill down, right? I'll leave that sitting there. And remember, it has got the long T10 in it, right? I'm gonna use this piece of garbage, because it's underpowered, but it's brilliant for this job. To start with, the first screw in here. Oh yeah, set this to boot center position, right? Oh, I make sure you're on speed one. It seems to be easier if it's on speed one. It doesn't really matter, it probably works okay in two. Right, so, if you can't get this screw out in here, turn up a bit, oh. yeah. make sure the screw comes out, and put it in a container so you don't know. In fact, I'm gonna line them up there today, I'm not gonna put them in a the container, because you're supposed to check to make sure that they're all the same lines. Wow, oh, these are in here pretty tight. Way to go, Bosch. And it was Bosch that started this carry on with the pen. They've been doing it for years. And all it is is just a way of making money. Now, the dwarf pins inside the chuck, you can't drill them out. But we actually did drill a Bosch out. You could try drilling it out. But even if you did drill it out and was able to change the chuck, you've got another problem. How do you stop the chuck from coming off when you're in reverse? You'd have to do what Hadachi did and put that metal glue in it. It's green in colour, right? A Loctite, I think it is, it's called. And use that. And that way it'd stop. But then if you have to change your chuck again later on, you goose. All this because you put pins in the blinking little chucks. Oh, I've done that one. Right. Always remember where you've gone, where you've been, right? And always make sure you've got, oh, actually that's too high, that's ripping them up. Right, that's it. Always check to make sure that you've got all the screws out. They sometimes hide screws in weird places. Trust me, I've seen them before doing it. Although it's clamshells coming apart pretty good. Right, so we've got rid of this, we've separated that. So we lift this up, give it a bit of a dunt, and hopefully it comes apart. Yeah, all right. Doesn't seem to be want to come apart even with a hammer. We'll get ah, there we go. Right, bit rat bash, get get yank and it comes off. Okay then, we got it off. We'll leave that up there. There's the inside of the clamshell there. Right. Okay. Now, this is the old model. The new model has a metal chuck. This is 2018, one month ago before Christmas. But next year I'll buy the newer model of this, which is 60 newton meters of torque with metal chuck. I'll buy that one, right? Get a bit of a review on it, and I'll take that to bits and do the same. Because this video, as you, as you know, is titled Chuck, Clutch, Gearbox, and Speed Selector, right? Repair. And this is why we're doing it. So, now you get your mobile phone, take a photograph of all of this now as it stands. You now know where all the wires go, where everything goes. So, really and truly, you should have no problems, right? Now, we'll have a quick look in the inside, because I think that's fair. Not really much to see, to be honest with you, no pokey thing. 
Right, down here is where most of the gubbins are that controls the electricity backwards and forwards and if you overheat things and push them too far and overload the switch off you've got little bits in here you got them, I can't quite remember what you call them Mossats or something they're called, Muffats, right big heat sink here, notice that but not much of that or there's a bit of that gooey stuff on there for water in case water gets in here this is a very robust drill. It's, well, this was this is actually still one of our favourite drills. Actually, we do like it because it's so butch. The more on it, I'm surprised isn't that big. But I can see why why this is so robust. There's a lot of air round about it as well. You see, and it's got a good fan. Shifts a lot of air. That's another sign of a good drill if they shift a lot of air. Now, so we've got this assembly here now. So let's see how we get this out. Now. Don't know, right? So we'll get a bit wiggling and wobbling and all the rest of it. And there we go, it's coming undone. Now right, we'll probably have to lift it up a bit. I might just lay this down just now, right? Right, yeah, I'll lift it up a bit and pull it, right? This edge here, this edge here, right, fits into that groove around there. Okay, then, so we've got it apart, and this is going to cost us. And as I said, if your gearbox and your speed selector buggers up and all the rest of it like and your gearbox I can understand replacing the whole lot. That nice Canadian gentleman that lives in Canada speaks a bit of French now and again right uh, he's had gearboxes to bits and pieces before and he's fallen for what like he puts one thing in wrong and the damn thing don't work. Really you don't want to be playing about in the gearbox. The clutches, I've had a look inside the clutch with the Milwaukee and the works drop, which I made a video on. Ain't doing it again. Although I didn't go inside the clutch on that one, I only went to the outside and fixed it. Yeah, the Milwaukee has actually failed. Failed. Fixed now. It was a fail, it, it's fixed. Oh yeah! And if you think this video is the same as the rest, it's not the same as the rest. I've made three videos, they all roughly are the same and I say the same things and all the rest, but they're the same things. Not quite, they're different, and I'm also wearing different blue t-shirts today, I'm wearing a, yeah, polo. So I'm wearing something different again. And this is very good, very robust. This is why I like Bosch. Somebody asked me, what's the best for reliability? I just went, Bosch. They're maybe not the fastest, they're maybe not the most powerfulest, but they just keep going on and on. Right. So imagine now, we sent off with a one-man band guy, right, with Chuck's Goost. We need a new chuck. So we have to send off, go to the local dealer, dealer, try and find out where to get it, or we found somewhere. We send off for it. We might have to wait three days, and this is the only drill we've got. We haven't got an impact. We're ghost. Whereas all you had to do was go on Amazon, on Prime, buy the chuck, take the pen out, knock the bloody chuck off, throw the other one on, put the pen back in again, and you're on the go. Should take no more than 20 minutes if you know what the hell you're doing to change a chuck. This. Right. So now we come to the reassembly, okay? So how do we do it? We chuck and gearbox and clutch and speed selector has arrived. We're going to put it in. And I said, that guy seemed really happy. Like, oh yeah, 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 this is what I got for my money. I got this. This I'm going to put it in. It was a different drill. He was using the brush drill, not the brushless version. All right? So anyway, and as I say, I can see now why this drill is so robust. There's a lot of air gap round about it and everything's fixed in there pretty goddamn well tight. This is a nice drill, I have to admit. Yeah, right, now, let's get it in. So, to get it out, we tilted the motor. Remember, don't play about with the brushless motors, right? And if your brushless motor fails, right? Yeah, I thought this was gonna be a bit of pain to get back in. No, it's not actually, it's me. It, actually, I'm wrong. Right, let's have a quick look at this. Why is this not going any 100%? Because I'm not quite round on there yet. I'm in the right space. Yeah, I had problems with the DCD996. This is giving us a little bit of a problem as well. There's where the motor goes. I know where this goes. This wants to be tilted more that way. And it's still not going quite. Ah, I'm off on this side here. Right. Let's lift this up a bit. I can see why. Right. Now, that's in place. That goes in there. And that goes down there. 
Actually, it doesn't go into that groove. I'm quite surprised at that. Right, I'll show you what I mean. I fell foul. I thought the white plastic bit here, I'll show you. This bit here, right, goes into that bit there. It doesn't, it goes to the side or inside there. Because the motor is in position now, right? Just, oh yeah, check to make sure the motor on this one is in position because you do kind of belly it about. Actually, I forgot to show you. At the back there, see you there, or that gubbins there, that is what actually controls the polarities on the, the brushless motor, right? Because they're actually DC, not AC. I'm not going to into it. If you want to know more about it, talk to that nice Canadian guy. Like, he'll explain it all to you. Because, as I said, he's better at that than me. Right, so, we've managed now to get that. We've got it in the right position now. As I say, the white bit of plastic there on top, this bit, just make sure, that bit there, goes in a, the side bit. doesn't go into this bit here. Okay, right. Now, the next thing where we can fall foul on this is making sure that we're uh, speed selected is in, right? Make sure that's in place, right? And make sure your forward and backwards switch is in the correct place as well, right? At twice I've had problems with them, right? Because uh, the DCD 796, it fell out and the DCD 996 was a pain in the ass. You want to watch that video, right? The next bit is this clip here, this bit where the battery goes, that has to be in position right, otherwise you get problems. So let's now try and gently put it back together again. Making sure we got it going right. Everything seems to be going right, uh-huh. That's in place. Clipped in, that's clipped in. We're still a bit loose up on here. Right, now what I'm going to do is, as soon as this is done now, right, let's turn it so you can see a bit better. I'm going to put four screws in very quickly, right? I turn this down onto five, right? The reason why I turn it down is that if the screws came out at six, putting them back in again, you can put screws tighter. It takes more energy to take them out than it does to put them in. Okay, in this type of stuff. So all I'll do is I'll put. Oh, I haven't gone. Right. right. Well, I did have it going. Right. Pop this into place. And I've been trying to do this video in one shot rather than stop starting it and pausing it. The only one I had to pause was the DCD996. And that was for a reason because I was worried about the electric uh, connection on it. Right. I haven't been paying attention to what screws I put in first. Just yet. Right. Why? I'm going to check it and make sure it works. No. So much wrong. That's not right, it's making a weird noise. Right, back in again. You know, I'll just please check that. See if I can dunk it a bit. Sometimes it works. Nah. We're going back in, some of it wrong. You see what I mean? This is how it can go wrong. I might as well just leave the camera running. <clears throat> So you see, no, no, it wasn't that one. Alright, as I said, this is what generally happens. Come on, you, oh, you jump. Yeah, get up now. Right, let's find out what we're hitting on. Oh, let's have a look, see. Well, that seems to be back correctly. It must be something to do with the motor. I must have mislined the motor slightly. Right, ah, now the motor did go down a tiny little bit. Let me plug in the battery in. Now be careful when you're doing this. There's a current in here, right? Pause this and have a quick better look at it and see where I went wrong on this shit. This could take a lot bit of time. I am right back. I'm in the correct position. Everything. I'll put the clamshell on just to make absolutely sure. Just now. Right. Clamshells now together. 
tipped it, pressed it. Motor was slightly out. Right. Come on, get out. Uh, uh. Right, again, try. Do you see what I mean? It's better to check. Put a few screws in and check. Motor was slightly out of alignment. That's what it was. And that was my fault, not Bosch or the drill's fault. It was mine. There we go. We'll just quickly put the four screws in that hard end and give it a quick fire up and that should be us almost finished. Right. Nope, it's down again. Something's not going right here. No, not to bits. Right, pause this, I'll have to have a quick better look at it and I'll find out where I went wrong. Okay, figure it out. Took me 20 minutes. I had to take it to bits and pieces three times, I want all the rest of it. Simple, nice little rookie mistake. There is six screws holding this in. You got to put all six screws in. I tried all different things inside, played with it and all this, made sure everything was in alignment. It was in alignment, but this it wasn't right so I thought right I've tried all this last thing is put the screws in all six of them along there did that now it works right so now we know you've learned a lesson so on your rebuild on this one remember put six screws in on the top first now we can go back see putting the rest in now you know why they were so tight because this was up on six, normally it's up on about four or five taking screws out. So hence why. Now you know. Now the last screw to go in, of course, is the first screw we took out. As I said, if you can't get that screw out, that waste of time going on till you can. Check the drill, make sure it still works. Right, that works. Right, does the clutch work? Yeah. Right, does hammer action work? Then no. Oh, speed control. That works. Hammer action. That works. Right, everything works on the drill. So we're good now to put the belt clip back on again. Right? That clip goes on this side. Right. So, now we know that the actual screws themselves have to be in, and there's six on the top. Should have guessed actually. As I said, I'm not exactly what you could call a pro professional. I'm just, well, take a professional attitude towards everything. Right, where's the two? I moved it up there. There it is. So now you know, you've learned. So now when, it, as I say, when you're doing yours, it's quite plain, it's quite simple. You know how to do it now. There it is, it's all back together again, up and running. We are so-called new chuck on it, but of course all that all I added was we just take it off and put it back on again. I say good drill, not too good on masonry like, it's a bit weak on it, but so, still a good robust drill, I must admit. So now you know how to do it. The six screws up on here, the which is, we you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seem to be these screws here that seem to be the key to it. As I say, 20 minutes of mucking about waiting, I thought, right, the only thing I haven't done is put all the screws in on top. Then it tried it and it worked. How simple was that? So really and truly, I had it right the first time round. All I had to do was put the bloody screws in. Yeah, right. Oh, one more thing to go on. The back piece. As, again, some of you may have lost that. We haven't. We still got it. Okay then. So there you have it. And all this, unnecessary hassle, because they put a pin in there to hold the chuck on that you can't get out. I will reflect on it. Yes, you can drill them out on the Bosch. I'm not too sure about the new ones. They've probably changed it. They're probably harder now, so you probably can't do it. But you might be. But if you do and still get the chuck off, how are you going to keep it on when you're in reverse? They'll just keep coming off. So you're going to have to use something like Loctite to actually put it in place and hold it. It's up to you what you do. Anyway, you see me tear this thing to bits and pieces and do it, and I've done it now. And this is the Bosch. So there you go. Anyway. I've had to do this four times because the fact is this, somebody's got to put in their individual drill and they're going to want to know how to do it 
and that's how you do it on this one and that's how you do it on the DeWalt's. Okay then, so my name's Milton, thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't know why he gave thumbs down, I mean look at the hassle I've had with this, quite entertaining, oh yeah it's made a mess of it like it's not going to fix, anyway subscribe if you want, right, and the next time I might be going on about a Hitachi chuck, but a different problem about that one, okay then. Bye now and thanks very much for watching and putting up ways.